The Justice League, Lex Luthor, Magneto, the Justice League again. It's been a rough year for superheroes in 2022. Here's who's queuing up for resurrection in the next few years. Like all the other members of Payback, Mindstorm is ruthlessly massacred by Soldier Boy during his quest for revenge on anybody remotely linked to his decades as a prisoner and guinea pig of Soviet-era military scientists. From what the boys lets us see, Mindstorm's powers are a rough blend of Charles Xavier and Jason Weingart's. He can hear thoughts, project images into the heads of other people, and induce nightmare-filled comas. What did Mindstorm do? Well, if it's his usual M.O., trapped him in an endless nightmare until he dies of terminal dehydration. Evidently, his power set does not include imperviousness to repeated blows from a dull metal object. Mindstorm's cranium caves right in after a handful of cracks from the edge of Soldier Boy's shield. Before Soldier Boy turns his skull into a bowl of face meat stir fry, Mindstorm provides the boys season 3 with two essential plot points. By banishing Billy to relive his worst memories as a series of nightmares, Mindstorm indirectly convinces him to nudge Huey away from a showdown with Homelander and onto a safer trajectory. Also, Mindstorm tells Soldier Boy the true nature of his relationship to Homelander, a fact that proves both unsettling and darkly obvious. This year, part of the team behind 2019's John Constantine Hellblazer reunited for the three-issue Endeavor Suicide Squad Blaze, and they certainly left their mark on the DC Universe. By the end of their Suicide Squad tale, everybody is dead. Superman takes on the story's enigmatic arch-fiend in the second issue and gets eaten for his trouble. The rest of the Justice League attacks soon after, but their efforts aren't much more successful. As you might expect, the likes of Peacemaker, King Shark, Amanda Waller, and Harley Quinn fail to survive this ordeal, although some of their deaths are much funnier than others. Of course, don't expect these deaths to stick. The events of Suicide Squad Blaze are established as occurring in a non-canonical alternate timeline from the mainline DC Universe. Transgender superhero Dreamer first appeared on the CW Supergirl and finally arrived in DC Comics in Superman Son of Kal-El, issue 13. While you might think the issue would focus on the comic debut of the popular character, nearly half the issue was spent on Dreamer's recollections of an upcoming point in the future, in which the villainous Bendix easily knocks off the entire Justice League, plus the Joker as a demonstration of dominance. These same characters seemingly also perished at the onset of DC's heavily promoted summer event, Dark Crisis. It appears 2022 is the year in which DC Comics repeatedly murders the Justice League. Then again, Jonathan's probably gonna prevent whatever causes all the atrocities Dreamer shows him in, so we guess it all comes out in the wash. The Penguin swallows a cyanide pill in Batman issue 125, just in time for a witness to see what looks like Batman strangling him. Savvy fans might presume the flightless crime-mongering creature will get back to the business of giving Gotham a hard time before long as they read this issue. After all, if Bane only stayed dead for less than two real-world years' worth of comics, how long can DC possibly keep the Penguin on ice? It turns out to be quite a bit shorter, since just two issues later in Batman issue 127, it's revealed that Oswald old Cobblepot did not, in fact, die. He merely underwent plastic surgery to reduce his famously beak-like nose, dyed his hair blonde, and relocated to Metropolis under the secret identity of Paul Meredith, harmless proprietor of Blossom's Florist. Up until Season 3 of The Boys, all we really know about Black Noir is that he doesn't say much and often takes the lives of other human beings with gruesome efficiency. In Season 3, we learn that he once fought as a member of Soldier Boy's team, Payback. His falling out with the patriotic phony during the 1980s eventually comes around to bite him in the butt and provide a basis for this particular season's storyline. When Homelander finds out Noir has always known the awful secret of his parentage, he punches clean through Noir's stomach and pulls a bunch of his guts out. As far as deaths on the boys go, it's arguably a little anticlimactic for a character who's been around since season 1. Back when he was the X-Men's primary villain, plenty of folks accused Magneto of being heartless. Leave it to Thanos' great uncle to turn a figurative accusation into a fatal reality for the master of magnetism. Then again, death is really more like a suggestion than an inevitability for a guy like Magneto. As documented in 2019's House of X slash Powers of X, the X-Men have figured out resurrection, granting de facto immortality to all mutants. Always a trailblazer, Magneto relinquishes his eternal existence in order to more effectively co-govern Araco, the planet formerly known as Mars. Not long after this decision, the eternal Uranus launches a ruthless onslaught against the Iraqi population. 
In a valiant defense of his people, Magneto faces Uranus and promptly finds himself lacking a central circulatory organ. With assistance from Storm, Max keeps his blood pumping with a stunning display of magnetic force and eventually dispatches Uranus. But the effort of thwarting a planetary threat without access to a heart proves too much, and Magneto succumbs to the gaping wound in the middle of his chest in X-Men Red Issue 7. Magneto has dictated that he shouldn't be brought back, but whether or not he ends up returning to the living is largely irrelevant. For now, the Master of Magnetism is decidedly deceased, and he went out in one of the coolest ways that any hero has in years. Chadwick Boseman passed away in 2020, but the on-screen death of King T'Challa doesn't occur in canon until the soul-destroying first scene of Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Stricken with an unexpected terminal illness, T'Challa can't access the healing properties of the heart-shaped herb because Killmonger tore the royal supply in 2018's Black Panther. Shuri is on the cusp of developing a synthetic heart-shaped herb replacement, but doesn't manage to finish the job in time to save her only sibling. It's instantly the saddest thing that's ever happened in the MCU, in part because T'Challa isn't brought down by Killmonger or Thanos. Instead, his killer is something entirely real, an illness, of the sort so many non-celluloid people die from. It's an invisible but omnipresent enemy, part of a world with a predilection for tragic flukes. The fact that it mimics the actor's real-life death makes it even more gutting. He was king and Black Panther to everyone. Black Panther Wakanda Forever certainly compensates for the first Black Panther film's underutilization of Angela Bassett's Queen Ramonda. Her tumultuous anguish and steely sense of duty to her nation and remaining loved ones provide a number of the movie's dramatic high points. While Shuri escapes into super science and shuts off her emotions to avoid mourning her brother and processing her grief, the wiser Ramonda tries to nudge her daughter into a healthier trajectory. Shuri's probably in a better headspace by the end of the movie, but Ramonda isn't around to see it. She drowns rescuing Riri Williams after Namor blows up the royal throne room during the attack on Wakanda. T'Challa establishes an unofficial Black Panther policy against revenge all the way back in 2016's Captain America Civil War. Justice will come soon enough. But after Namor kills Ramonda, even the most pacifist of MCU fans might find themselves rooting for Shuri to put a sharp piece of vibranium between Namor's neck and the rest of his body. It's a little surprising that it took Prius Brosnan, or as 90s kids know him, James Bond, this long to find his way into a superhero movie. And it's equally surprising to see the Justice Society of America lending their retro cred to one of DC's only movies to get a theatrical release in 2022. While the proto-Justice League came to be in comics first published in the early 1940s, the wholesome team has experienced hills and valleys of relevance ever since. And in a vacuum, it's downright shocking that Kent Nelson doesn't survive the events of Black Adam. With more than 80 years of on-again, off-again appearances in monthly comics, multiple appearances in animated series, as well as a live-action turn in Smallville, the Golden Domed Wizard is at least as famous as Doctor Strange was before Benedict Cumberbatch arrived on the scene. But whether or not would buy tickets to see Brosnan star in a Doctor Fate trilogy seems irrelevant as, sadly, his abilities to manipulate space and time apparently provide little defense against a really hard punch to the torso. But then again, as is often the case with matters pertaining to fate, things are not always as they seem, with Dwayne Johnson promising on Twitter that fans would see more of the character. However, with James Gunn and Peter Safran now in charge, we'll just have to wait to see if it's still fated to be. Overall, the modern era soft relaunch of Jack Kirby's Eternals is a mixed bag. Director Chloe Zhao's Eternals isn't landing at the top of an MCU favorite film list anytime soon. Meanwhile, the Deathless cohort quietly climbed to prominence in their 2021 comic series. One thing leads to another in 2022's AXE, Judgment Day, and it falls upon Cersei to demonstrate to a literal planet annihilating god that the Eternals aren't necessarily destined to repeat the same malignant loops into infinity. She asks humanity to judge her for the scores of people the Eternals have obliviously murdered over the years. Humanity judges her harshly, and the aforementioned wrathful god waves her out of existence. Just about everybody dies at some point in Judgment Day, but Krakoan resurrection protocols, in addition to other factors, bring almost everybody back, with the major exceptions of Magneto and Cersei. You might say that the moral to Cersei's sacrifice is that with great power comes great accountability. Titans feels like an Arrowverse show. If Arrowverse shows have the budget and energy of late 90s syndicated cable instead of 2010's network melodrama, sure it's a little cheesy, but so what? 
Titans can take real chances, and if they don't pan out, well, the show has never had a glowing reputation to lose in the first place. A dying man is like a cornered animal. That's when they're most dangerous. In a move that clearly requires intestinal fortitude and or utter madness, Titans brings aboard widely recognizable actor Titus Welliver to play one of DC's most essential big bads, and almost immediately kills him off with a magic snake. In the Season 4 premiere, the Titans are summoned to Metropolis, where Connor Kent has led to believe he'll finally meet the source of half the DNA he was cloned from, Superman. When the gang arrives, Superman's out on a mission in the middle of space somewhere. But Lex Luthor, Superboy's other clone dad, offers to catch up instead. Though initially hesitant to partake in father-son bonding with the world's worst supervillain, Connor eventually agrees to the meeting, where he learns that the Man of Steel's greatest foe will be dead from kryptonite poisoning within six months. Lex tells Connor he'd like to spend what time he has left getting to know his only child and bequeaths Connor ownership of LexCorp, right before the aforementioned magic snake appears in Lex's esophagus and strangles him from within. First appearing in 2001's Action Comics issue 775, Manchester Black has come a long way since his snarky and homicidal early days. Originally the leader of the Elite, a group of crime fighters who turn into Superman's enemies once they find out he won't let them do murders, Manchester accepts an offer from Superman to join a new version of the Authority. Sadly, Manchester is in some degree of cahoots with Lex Luthor throughout his affiliation with Supes. Lex eventually explodes Manchester's brain to erase Superman's secret identity from the global population's memory. Because, well, because that's the sort of thing that happens in comics sometimes.